Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today for middle grade March, I'm going to be discussing this book, the, which is the prompt for a book which is older than you are. This is um, Roller Skates by Ruth Sawyer. It was written in um, 1936 and set sometime in the 1890s. We don't know exactly for sure, but uh, I have found out while reading reviews and such, it's like very, very strongly based on the author's own life. And I really don't like when I find out a book is like a thinly fictionalized memoir, just, you know, kind of annoys me. Like, why couldn't you just like take your own life, like as a jumping off point and like, you know, fictionalize instead of just, oh, basically like changing up the names and tweaking a few minor details here and there. But anyway, that is something that annoys me. And, you know, this is, um, it was written in the 1930s, I mentioned, but it was written about her own childhood in the 1890s. And I agree with other people who wrote some reviews. I read it seems more geared towards like adults who are sentimental for old New York City, which, you know, even in those days, like nowadays, we might think of, you know, old New York, you know, like the 1920s, 1940s and such. But no, in the 30s, they were thinking and like sentimentalizing and romanticizing it as, you know, the 1890s, which was the decade when New York City became a first class um, a great world city. And I do apologize if there's a really annoying noise from the street. This window faces a street and there's nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. So anyway, here's the um, synopsis. There's actually two different synopsis, but they're like basically like the same, like just like slightly different. Lucinda's year in New York City began when her family went to Europe, and left her with Smith Peters, not, thank heaven, with Aunt Emily and her four docile ladylike daughters. Miss Peters understood that a girl of ten wanted to roller state the gate to school and stop and chat with patrol man McGonagall and make friends with Mr. Gilligan, the cabbie, and even play with Tony, whose father kept a fruit stand down the street. Roller Skates is a delightful story of old New York about a tomboy who could not help being a lady at the same time. And this is one of those books where the description makes it sound like more interesting than it actually is. And I also kind of didn't understand at first that um, Lucinda already lives in New York City. It made it seem like, oh, her parents like took her to New York while they went abroad. No, they already living there. And they're, you know, like Tony Swells, like among high society of the time. They live in a hotel and um, Aunt Emily, um, Uncle Earl, and their um, four like ladylike daughters live in a, a brownstone. This is still a little bit before most of the upper class swells started moving into those beautiful, spacious, pre-war luxury apartments. They still lived in, you know, brownstone townhouses and such so that's like a like a world that really doesn't exist anymore and a world that was soon you know going to gradually start fading more and more is you know just the way people in New York City live and it opens with a really goofy gimmicky setup and we never return to this like ever again in the book like it not even at the ending there's this unnamed woman who apparently is the author as an adult looking back on her old self like her fictionalized version as Lucinda and you know she's um skating like past the window and she's like oh don't you remember all these things like this like huge obnoxious info dump about all the like characters she meets in the book and the adventures she has and that that was really like a stupid gimmick I really don't like gimmicks like that and also Lucinda's um diary entries are inserted periodically throughout the book and it follows this annoying custom when she's giving the year like 189 dash like what's the big secret or would this like do something like reveal like personal information or something if she like let us know the exact year this was taking place that's just like another thing I think was really goofy about this book and other things that annoyed me it's like third person omniscient which I do most of my um, own books and it's the voice that naturally comes like best to me but like this is like the old-fashioned god mode third person omniscient there were so many times there was some variation of the line um years later Lucinda would discover that or Lucinda would learn like 20 years in the future like that is so obnoxious and she even talks in like a first person authorial voice a few times like oh I think this like that is so stupid I, I mean I'm just really annoyed at a lot of things with this book and it's you know also kind of like a, a writing style that's of its time like for example um like telling more than showing and like not fleshing out certain themes themes and I have a hard time seeing like a child or preteen of today who could really like relate to this story. I love episodic stories that are like, you know, deliberately slower paced and more about, you know, character development instead of, you know, f fast paced, plot centric, bang, 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 bang. But, you know, you at least need to hang like a more episodic story on some kind of like overarching, you know, story arc instead of just like, oh, these are like episodes and then they end and they're like never, you know, 
referred to again. And I also wish we had, you know, a little bit of like built up getting to know Lucinda in her situation before, like her parents are getting ready to leave for Europe. And there's a letter from Aunt Emily saying, oh, I'm horrified you would um, let her stay with these um, two spinster sisters, the Miss Peters is like, you should let her stay with me and I'll turn her into more of a lady. Like if we had, you know, known Lucinda a little before the story actually like begins, like for example, like apparently the author is basing this on her own childhood. It was, you know, very restrictive and she all chafed against it and didn't like fit in with like the upper class twits that her like parents loved, like hanging out with like, see that a little bit instead of just like being thrown into the story. We don't know who she is or why she likes, you know, roller skating and why this is so, you know, freeing for her when she's been living under these like annoying social like conventions and like stupid rich society her whole life. And anyway, she like goes around making friends with like, you know, so-called like public characters as um, Jane Jacobs dis described them in on the death and life of great American cities who don't really exist anymore. Like remember like the cab, cab driver, a junk man, an Italian immigrant who runs a fruit stand in his son, you know, just people who live in hotels and brownstone. She comes into contact with them um, throughout the story and in her own um, boarding house where she's living. And I was kind of annoyed. Like she keeps like referring to herself. Oh, I'm a pretended orphan because my parents aren't here. And like, she's referring to the boarding house where she's staying as her orphanage. That just really kind of angered me because like, it's kind of a slap in the face to actual orphans who weren't really, you know, didn't have the opportunity to go back to their family after like a, a year or nine months of staying with other people. I, I know she's just playing pretend, but I thought that was really like horrible and stupid and offensive. And when she meets some of these like characters who come from different cultures, it seemed kind of like she was, you know, like, oh, look at these like fun, exotic playthings. Like, oh, oh, like, OMG, a real bambino when she meets the Italian family and they have a baby. I mean, I know it wasn't meant to be like, you know, offensive or anything like that. It's not, you know, like malicious stereotyping, but you know, there are some, you know, ethnic stereotypes present throughout the book. And it sometimes she does feel a bit like white saviory. And there's, I don't notice some definite um, anti-Semitic overtones and how one character was portrayed. And I also thought it was like stupid how like most of the time the, um, leads who's a manager of the boarding house, um, Miss Lucy, she's referred to as Miss Lucy, comma, honey. Like that's so stupid. Uh, so many things about this book annoyed me and there were like a few like kind of like old-fashioned spellings that we don't use anymore like carousel with two r's and surprise with a z and just you know a lot of things throughout the book that kind of like annoyed me or just you know stuck out and like for example another reason it might have been written more towards sentimental adults instead of actual children and I cannot believe this one the Newberry that year apparently was one of the first Newberry books that was about a girl instead of a boy like were the pickings that slim that year were there no other really good books about girls and such like that but just you know so many things about this book that didn't jive with me at all and there was at one point and this is like absolutely horrifying um Lucinda walks in on a murdered body like lying on a couch with a dagger in her back and it's of course she like freaks out and such but you know the cops tell her you know don't tell anybody you saw this, we'll let one of the maids come in and find it and she'll report it to the police and everyone will believe she found that because like everyone will be asking questions if you do that. And it's basically like swept under the rug as if it never happened. Like WTF, like what? That is like horrible. Like in any book, particularly for a child, like you just like use it as a throwaway storyline. Oh, oh, I found a murdered body and it's, you know, I'm shocked about it, but oh, it's not a big deal. I'm not like thinking about it at all soon. And there's another death in the book also which is I guess done a little bit better but you know just so many story threads about this book they didn't really you know come together well or like lead into one another or they were just you know little like throwaway episodes and there was another like horrifying moment in the book for me um, when Lucinda is roller skating to Thanksgiving she has like at least eight invitations to have dinner by these people like this um, fat dude who's walking down the street really slowly they run into one another and um Lucinda is gets horribly like, injured her both of her um, knees and legs are skinned her um gloves like pop out of the, the fingers pop out of the gloves her stockings are ripped and uh, some of other her clothes are ruined and the fat man tells her you deserved it like that uh, such a horrible thing to say to a child but like, particularly when you like you help to cause the accident it's always you know adult's responsibility to you know get out of the way you know don't like hurt a child and then to say oh you deserved it you little brat just so many things about this book just you know horrified me and it was just kind of slow going oh and another thing this 
Lucinda's um Uncle Earl, she's like very close to him, unlike Aunt Emily. And by the way, I do wish there had been, you know, more development of this like antagonist, Aunt Emily and the four daughters. We don't really see much of them, so it doesn't really, you know, come alive necessarily or feel so believable when we're told, oh, she wants Lucinda to be um docile and they like, oh, and by the way, they're constantly referring to Lucinda having tantrums and they must have a different definition than I do because to me a tantrum is, you know, like screaming and sobbing and crying and you know, jumping up and down and beating your fists on people and, you know, kicking furniture and stuff and whining until you get your way. Lucinda's just, you know, like, she's not necessarily, like, behaving, like, or speaking properly. She kind of can express herself a bit, like, rudely with a poor brain mouth filter, but she's not what I would consider, you know, having a tantrum. She's just, you know, a child, like, asserting some boundaries, raising her voice and asserting unpopular opinions. So anyway, there's this one, um, I mean, this is one of those lines that looks so different in the modern era. They're talking about, you know, um, Lucinda and Aunt Uncle Earl are, you know, like bonding over like reading Shakespeare and, you know, they're cuddling and stuff because, you know, Victorians were always doing that um, touchy-feely garbage, which I, I cannot relate to. I'm not from a touchy-feely family at all. And there's this line, um, he kissed her very tenderly. This is an uncle and a 10-year-old niece. I know, obviously, it was not considered in a creepy way at all. It was not intended to, like, have, like, incestuous overtones. But that's the kind of sentence you would write about, like, two adult lovers. It's just, it's like one um line in um, Betsy in the Great World in the Betsy Tacy series. The air was full of ejaculations. Like, that reads so much differently in the modern air. It's just, like, completely different connotation these days. So just so many things about this book didn't, age well for me at all and I think a modern child even a very precocious child would have a hard time relating to it and like for example who knows what a pongee pinafore or a reefer pocket are I mean that's just I mean it's one thing to have vocabulary words that maybe a modern child wouldn't know but you know you can always like guess the meaning from context or look it up in the dictionary or ask an adult but when you're like referring to specific types of clothing and like hairstyles and things like that you can't necessarily picture that from the context and that might not be in a dictionary at all so like at least to find that in the in the book so you know like oh that's what a pongee pinafore looks like instead of like giving the impression oh this was just for like adults who want to relive their 1890s childhood and such like that and another thing um obviously education was structured much differently in this era and like students learned things at you know different ages than they do now and this is obviously why like many students in the old days they were like ready for college by the time they were 16 it wasn't because they were like super smart and skipping grades it was just because they taught certain things and introduced different things at certain ages and different you know things they were required to know so like Lucinda is um reading Shakespeare and Charles Dickens already at 10 years old and loving them and understanding them she doesn't have any problems with that at all and also a lot of other adult books and she's like studying French and Latin at school like we're not I mean, this isn't, you know, like learning like fun stuff, like, you know, vocabulary words and cute songs. No, she's learning them so they can translate actual like books and speeches and such. It's not just like many um, elementary school students learning languages today. And we barely see anything at all of her going to school. I would have liked to learn, you know, what her school is like and such beyond that. Oh, she does some really like stupid, like headstrong stuff one time and gets into trouble and is sent home for the day because of this and just so many things about this book like um she's given free reign to pretty much do what she wants. obviously I know like children in those days you know they could you know just like hang out and as, as long as you know they came home before dark and there wasn't as much you know helicopter parenting and such but these um two um spinster sisters who are watching her they basically just oh as long as you come in by like five o'clock that's totally cool we don't care where you are where you're going or that you're like going to strangers houses and just like people are just so much more trusting in that era and just like so many things about this book that didn't like work well for me it's not necessarily because it's an older book I've enjoyed and related to like many older books what both like as an adult and when I was a child but there were just you know so many things I don't think would make this book age well either for the intended audience or for adults who want to read it and it's just you know not something I would personally recommend unless you're on a mission to read all the Newberry books and there are like some like illustrations throughout it like you know here this is one of the illustrations and she celebrates on Christmas and Thanksgiving in the book and she uh, makes friends with a four-year-old little really really tiny Polish girl who lives upstairs her 
nickname is Trinket and her parents again are like totally trusting. Okay, you can borrow her even though like why would a 10 year old want to be friends with a four year old beyond maybe like playing dress up with a litter sister or something. That's also something that I don't think really would carry over well into the modern era. And I'm sorry if I'm only basically, you know, like saying negative things about this book, but it just was not my style at all. And it's not the kind of like book I would like see myself wanting to reread or like giving to future children if I'm God willing, I am blessed with children before time runs out. And just, it's basically, you know, kind of like a love song to old New York for a people who actually lived through it and say, so I'm sorry if I've been rambling a bunch and because this is completely unscripted, but it's just not necessarily a book I think would be like good for like middle grade readers. So thank you for um, listening to the end. If you have, again, I would not like recommend this book at all, though apparently there is also a sequel, again, very strongly based on the author's life about a year. They were, her family was um living on a little like farm in Maine where they, they have an estate there, several homes. My next um, video should be on Monday. Hopefully it'll be about a more um, adult topic if you're only, you know, subscribing to me for my like serious adult content. And you might be surprised because I'm doing these um book reviews for um middle grade March. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please, if you haven't already, consider um, liking, um, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. I really enjoy um, reading comments from people, even if you know they're just like short, like, oh, I like this book, or I didn't like this book, or I disagreed with you. I just want to get to know who my subscribers and viewers are. So see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.